Well, hello everyone. Welcome to week seven. Painting one, VPA 121, Hostos College, instructional video. And if you've been following over the last weeks, we've done the size of the face and I'll always recap it for those students who need to be reminded. One third from the top of the skull to the top of the eyebrows one third from the top of the eyebrows to the bottom of the nose and one third from the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin. One third, one third, one third. Try and get your head in that ratio of thirds. One eye here and then you have the space of one eye between the eyes and then you start the other eye. So it's like one eye, space of one eye, the length of one eye, and then that's where the other eye starts. Don't have them too close together. Don't have them too far apart. Now, if you're getting a little bit lost with all this stuff, just go back and look at the videos. They're all there on YouTube. They're all accessible. They're not being taken down. And you can be watching it again to remind yourself of how to draw the proportions of the face correctly. Anyway, in this quick recap, those are the sizes of the face and a line down from the edge of the eye, down here, coming straight down at the edge of the face gives you where the neck starts and the same with the other eye, a line, an imaginary line drawn from the outside of the eye, the far edge of the eye here on the outside and it goes down there and that comes to the neck. So that's a quick recap. I'm not going to go over every single detail because I've done that in previous videos and you're welcome to go back to those and learn more about it. Anyway, as you know, we're going to do this stage by stage. I keep telling the students, don't rush it. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, as long as you contact me every week, email or text, and explain what's going on with you, any troubles you may be having, that's fine with me. As long as you do that and keep in touch, I will not penalise you. So we're going to look at the face. Now you'll remember last week I was starting to do the underpainting, which are the shadows. And I used, uh, I've got my acrylic here, which is burnt sienna. I think you've got Blick tubes, but this is Liquitex. It's burnt sienna. You may have that or you may have burnt umber. Both of them are equally good. It's a brown colour. Brown for the start of the un underpainting. And uh, some of you might find it quite difficult to control that. I saw some of the paintings and you covered the whole face and it, that's okay. It is difficult at the beginning and it's easy for me to say things but when you come to do it on your canvas, it's very easy to lose control completely and to try and cover up your mistakes. So don't forget, as an artist, it's okay to make mistakes. In fact, really good paintings are like a sea of mistakes that eventually resolve on the last layer. And it's the mistakes that give the painting power. So. Without further ado, I'm going to carry on doing a little bit of the burnt umber around the nose. Now you'll remember we're looking here on the underpainting for where I'm going to look at my, I've got the mirror in front of me here and I'm doing this all close up. So I've got the uh, shadows at the edge of the nose here so that it can kind of stand out a bit. Now, you're going to work on the canvas, you know. Uh, if you can't afford a canvas, just work. There's a student working on cardboard. That's fine. Uh, you can work on thick paper. Really, you know, it's up to you what you work on. And uh, as long as you get it, you know, to a reasonable size, that's okay with me. But if you're getting the box from Blick, which is a fantastically good deal and it is $42 reduced from 120 and it has professional art equipment in it. It has the uh, brush pack 
like this, which is going to give you 12 hog brushes. And hog is made from uh, pig's hair. Very good spring and bounce. And the small brush as well, which I asked you to get, should be something like that. This is one from Blick. And it's the one, the only one brush that you're going to have that comes to a point. So I'm using that just now. It's got synthetic hair and I'm doing around the eyes. Remember I said that we wanted to make the eye set in a bit, you know, so that it's not flat, you know, like the eyes and the nose are on the same flat picture plane. Now here again, two containers of water. I'm using these old um, plastic tubs, one for dirty water, one for clean water. I don't know about you, but I find if I use smaller ones like these, they get dirty too quickly. So hopefully these bigger ones last longer and I don't have to keep refilling them from the tap. So I'm going round the nose a bit here. I mean, it's basically, I'm working on top of the drawing that I did last week to just kind of reinforce it. Now, remember that underneath your face is a skull muscles and everything so you don't want a face that looks like a flat cardboard mask so you want to have a sense of the bone structure underneath the skin that's what i'm trying to do here now let's leave it there for a little while once you reach a certain stage you're going to want to start to establish another layer of the uh, shadows. So I'm going to use white paint and black paint. The two polarities. And I'm going to use them to mix up different stages of tone of grey, white to black. So it's going from light to dark. So I'm going to use it to mix up different tones of grey. Now with this grey, can you see that okay? I'm going to start to work in on top of the shadows that I've just done. And you can see I, some of this is dry, some of it's not dry. But now, when you're blending in with the brush, a lot of you ask me questions about that. Take one of the smaller brushes from your uh, blister pack. Here's one. And just ponce it back and forth like that. So you're going like that. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, can you see that? And I'm gonna do that again here so you can see it. So I'm gonna move some of the gray around this nose. Now, I know some of the students used uh, white to blend in with the brown, and that's okay. You're all struggling to find your own way of communicating with painting, and that's what art is all about. I can give you guidance, but then you might find different paths to get to where you want to get. And I always say, as long as you get over the wall, I don't care what the ladder looks like, because the ladder only is doing a job. And it's the same with painting, you know, there's millions of techniques. I'm showing you a traditional realist technique, which is useful for everybody. But you will find your own techniques as you play in at it. So I'm working up on this gray on top of the brown that I've already done. Because I'm really going to intensify those shadows in certain areas. Now, I don't know what kind of setups you've got at home. Obviously, I've kind of uh, doing the art teaching, so I've managed to have a, a dedicated room that I can keep. And I'll tell you this, this room gets into a hell of a mess. Uh, <laughs> there we are. Can you see that? Okay. That's it. So I'm going to blend in here and watch the brush. It's going up and down, up and down, up and down. Poncing.
I don't know if that's the official word. It's a word I made up for it because it's kind of boom, 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 boom. So I'm going over the eyebrows again. And I'm going to use some of that, whoops. Give the poor bugger a grey here. And I'm going to go over a little bit of that background as well, you know, and as I said, no matter what kind of thing you end up doing in the background, even if it's uh, a Mediterranean sky, you can still paint it on top of this grey. This is the underpainting, which means that it will only be under your painting. Not, no one wants a really grey background. Well, maybe you do. So I'm doing one half behind him darker than the other half. If that makes sense. And then I'm going to move some more of that white. With the black and white, you're basically creating a range of tones, you know, from light to dark. You're, oh, geez. you're giving yourself more control at the beginning. And you're keeping all the colours reduced at the beginning. You know, you can, anybody can squeeze colour out of a tube and say, I'm great at colour, but I want to really teach you how to do things and not mask things, if that makes sense. In other words, not cover up your inadequacies at the beginning, but let them be seen as as a positive part of the painting you know that's uh, there's nothing there's nothing worse than being too critical of yourself so just allow what's what you think is wrong to be part of what makes the painting strong so you can see i'm going into this now I've done, that is a mistake going around like that but i'm going to just make it so I'm going to go underneath the chin with this dark concoction, which is spreading all over the place. I'm going to make it right dark underneath his chin, so I want him to stand out. Now I'm, can't, I'm using this brush because I call this the drawing brush. You know, with this one you can draw into the painting. You can bring it back. And then this one you know, and you can use all of the brushes in your uh, selection box. Where is it again? Here. You know, you can use any ones you like. You know, it's up to you. You can use the smaller ones or the medium ones and the larger ones if you want to kind of go like that with it. You know, there's no, there's no rules in painting. You use what... Well, you know, there are basic rules, but, the, you know, when you're working with brushes, there's no rules with brushes. Use the ones that work for you. When you feel like you need a small brush, use a small brush. When you feel like you need a large brush, use a large brush. I mean, it's just common sense. It's like painting a wall. So I'm going to, although I'm doing him darker there, I'm going to keep a light around the edge of the chin here. Can you see that? Just so he stands out from the space behind him. Okay. So I'm going to go in even darker. Now that's using black and white. And you can use it as it suits you, you know. Sometimes darker, sometimes lighter. You're trying to kind of define things with this underpainting. So that by the time you come to painting the figure... It's already got the kind of animation of life. That's what really we're looking for. Okay, around here. That's it. And I'm going to use that brush from the pack again. Can I blend that in? Now you really are learning a technique that even in art schools, not all of them are going to be getting. So it's uh, really something that you can 
carry on learning from for the rest of your life if you get the artist's bug. Not every student gets that, you know, a lot of them are just doing this as an endurance trial and also a way of trying to get an easy A. But every so often, more often than not, thank God, we get students who get what I call the artist's bug. And uh, that is unlike the virus that's going around in the uh, ether just now. That is a positive virus because once you've got the artist's bug, it'll stay with you. It's like riding a bike. It'll stay with you for the rest of your life. And you'll always want to communicate something with painting. And uh, I'm giving you the tools that maybe will be useful in the future for that. So I'm going to do the top lip in the kind of... I'm painting on top of the brown of last week. I'll do it with the top lip a little bit darker and then the bottom lip with some white mixed with the black. I'm going to do it. The problem with doing these demonstrations is, you know, it's easy to kind of paint it, but you, I can't paint slow, so to speak. You know, paint, when you're painting, it's at the rhythm of your brain, so it's, you know, the paintbrush and everything moves fast. I mean, you can you can freeze frames of this videotape and try and watch it that way. Um, but, uh, see, I'm putting a little light on top of the lip. Can you see that? Just to make it stand out. Put some shadow there. And I'm going to put some shadow on here. Then I'm going to work on that nose a little bit more here. a light underneath. How much are we on? 17 minutes. So I'm with a little dark, darker, much darker underneath the chin. Now some of you won't be really understanding this. You know, you'll be saying, oh my god, what's he wanting? Some of you will be getting this, that it's kind of coming, making it come to life. And those of you who are looking at this just now and who remember last week's face and who are actually interested in this course, we'll see that this face is slowly starting to become alive, you know, and so that is what you're wanting with a painting. And I will accept whatever way that you're communicating with the paint. Everyone's going to be different because uh, thank God it's not like photography where everything is uh, Especially nowadays with the digital photography, you know, with analogue, which was the old photography. People really had to think about what they were photographing because there was only about 20 photogra 24 photographs or 36 in the uh, reel. So nowadays it's just anything is photographed and it saturated us to such an extent that everything just looks um, rather dull. But if you really have to think of what you're doing, you know, you, you pay a lot more attention to it and it looks more interesting. So here we go. I'm going to put a little, I'm going to put a little light on that eye there. Just a little spot of white. Maybe that's it. Try it in there, but. That, that shadowing is just for this side here. Hair, you don't need to worry about it too much to the end. I'll put a few grey streaks as... <laughs> I am getting them. And a little bit in there. I hope this is starting to make sense so you're you know and you can go pretty bold with it you know it's I know some of your hands are only learning you know and the more you paint the better you'll get it's a kind of practice makes perfect thing you know so if you don't do it you won't get anything the more you do it the more you'll get there we go And I was telling some students, that girl that I was painting last week, I had to destroy it completely. 
I was painting it on paper and uh, something went wrong with the paper so I had to paint all over it and so I've been struggling myself this week. I, I'm not so perfect as <laughs> these short talks may give the impression. I am like you, I'm always learning and I think that's the true sign of an artist or anybody who's uh, worthwhile. They're always learning, there's always something new. They've never reached a point where they say, I know everything about everything. I never trust those people because they might know everything about everything, but do they know nothing about nothing? Now, those of you who don't understand what I've said, it's not one of those things that you understand, but you can think about it. He knows everything about everything, but he knows nothing about nothing. Anyway, it goes on like this. Now, I'm, every brush will be a communication of your inner being. It's the brush strokes. So I'm trying to kind of animate it up here. Now, it's an underpainting. All we're doing just now is creating something using burnt sienna, white, maybe I missed out the camera there, burnt sienna, white, and black. And uh, you do the burnt sienna first of all. And if you've forgotten that, I did that last week. That's on the week six videotape. And this is the week seven. So, you know, put in the results from this. Around the uh, October the 14th will do for it. And uh, I know some of you are struggling to get things done but please make sure that you keep communicating to me so that I know what's going on with you and I know what's happening because without that online courses are impossible to really do so it relies on you using text or email contacting me letting me know what's going on and then I can offer you some quick advice on the text or an email. Now you can see I'm doing it kind of ragged and you can do that, you know, because nothing here is permanent. It's all part of what's going to eventually become the start of the face now, oh my God. <laughs> See, I'm starting to get worried and you will too but just play around as I said let it dry which I'm going to do with this and later on put a little bit of neck down there because a man needs a neck later on you can paint over the mistakes But as I said, without the mistakes, the painting has no life. You know, life isn't just about sitting all of it, 80, 90, God knows how many years, sitting in a comfortable place, a comfort zone. You might as well just sit on some sort of painkiller for the whole of your life for that. Life is always going to give you stuff that's going to throw up and it's those things that happen that help us to grow. So let it dry. All right. I'll leave it there just now. That's it. It's kind of chaos at the beginning. There's a lot going on. It's starting to draw it out. You're bringing the painting to life. Three colours at the beginning for the underpainting. Burnt sienna, black and white. Burnt sienna first, like I showed you last week in the week six videotape. And this week seven is basically building up on the grey on top of that. And it's like a kind of sepia head that's emerging. Once that dries, we're going to start to do... start to do the face tones, colours of the face. That'll be very exciting. Anyway, that's it for now. 
try and do as best as you can. If you haven't managed to get the art box yet from Blick, go out and buy it before they sell out. They're still there. Blick, B-L-I-C-K, Harlem. It's an art store and they're waiting for you. It's called the Hostos Art Box Professional Art Equipment. But you're welcome to get it anywhere you like. You might find us an art box on Amazon or somewhere else cheaper and just buy it. All you need is canvases, palette, brush and paints, and you'll be able to carry on for the rest of the semester enjoying yourself. Anyway, I can't think of anything more to say right now other than please have a great week. If you're not contacting me regularly and uh, by text or email, I won't be able to give you marks because I won't know whether you're paying attention or not. So please make sure that you give me some sort of heads up, even just your name with some details. Let me know how you are. That's all I need. Okay, wishing you all the very best. Send in whatever results you have by October the 14th and I will reply to you as soon as possible. Thank you, everybody. Wishing you a very good week. All the best. Bye.